What's happening guys, Chris here again. Today I'm doing a little bit of an update with my X100V, showing you a couple of accessories that I bought for it that just make it feel a little bit nicer to use and go through all my custom settings that I've changed with my picture profile and a couple of other things in the menu that I switched around which make it a much better camera for me personally. Now all the photos I'm gonna show you guys for this video are just all gonna be straight out of camera JPEGs in the picture profile I'm using so you can see not edited photos, just what they look like straight out of the camera, just so you can see what you're gonna expect from the settings I'm using. So one of the first things I put on it was this Peak Design strap with the quick disconnect links. I really like these. They just make it much easier to get the strap on and off. And it's a small strap, you know, it doesn't need to be something big. It looks nice and it's easier just to pack away when you're putting it into a tight space like my glove box or something like that. The other thing I checked on it was this soft shutter release. It's quite a big one, but it makes it feel really nice to hold. It actually has a little leather pad on top of it. It's not actually the one that I ordered off Amazon, but I'm gonna put a link to it anyway so you can get it if you want this one, but I actually really like it and I think it's better than the one I actually ordered. In terms of the lens hoods, I actually wanted to put a filter on it because if you've seen in my previous video, I actually scratched, not the lens, but the plastic part inside there. Uh, with my when I was using my glass prism so straight away that was the first thing I ordered and I actually ordered two of them so this one is a JJC one uh, this video isn't sponsored by them by the way I bought all this stuff just straight from Amazon or eBay um, so this is just the standard one that most people have uh, it comes off nice and easy if you want it to be a little bit smaller and I did order the square one that you can buy as well it looks really awesome but when that turns up I'll just put a picture of it and I need to make a new video for that I don't think uh, and I'm just using a B plus W filter on there, just a B plus W UV clear filter. In terms of memory cards, you guys have asked me what I'm using, and I'm just using the standard SanDisk Extreme Pro, same cards I use in my, my uh, Sony cameras. These are the 95 megabyte ones. They read at 95 and write at 90 megabytes. Some people are a little bit confused because some of them say 170 megabytes on the cards. That's just the read speed. So they will copy from the card to your computer faster, but they still write in 90 megabytes the same as these ones. So with all that said, let's just jump straight into the back of the camera and I'll show you guys everything I have going on there. So first I'm just gonna show you the picture profile that I use. I have it just set on this uh, top button here and I'm using Classic Neg. Uh, I've tried all the other ones. I used to use Classic Chrome in the past and that was probably my favorite. But Classic Neg gives a really kind of different vibe to it and I'm really, really digging it. So that's really all I've been using other than a cross. And then I just use standard across. Uh, but first let's jump into my custom settings for Classic Neg. So if we go into the Q menu here, um, you can see I have it on base one. Uh, all this stuff is pretty standard. Uh, dynamic range I have left to 100. And I have noise reduction down to minus four just to avoid any kind of artifacts that I might be getting from Fuji JPEGs. So I'm usually shooting in three by two, but sometimes I do have it on 16 by nine. Not very often, but I do like that cinematic effect that it gives you. Uh, and I'm shooting raw plus fine JPEG. Sharpness I have set to plus one. Color just at zero. Uh, I've tried with the shadow and the highlight tones. Sometimes I'll have them on plus one and plus one, but I kind of just prefer it to have it like this. So, and then LCD brightness I have down to minus one. Now I do have some other settings with grain, etc. So grain I have just gone straight for strong and large. Uh, I really like the effect it produces. Not everybody's going to be the same, but uh, that's just totally up to you. Now in terms of raw recording, I do have it on compressed, same as my Sony files. Uh, I haven't done any tests yet about, you know, the difference in quality, but to be totally honest with you, I'm not really overly concerned with it. I feel like compressed is totally fine for me, but that's going to be something personal to you guys as well. Heading down the menu, I have long exposure noise reduction off. I always turn all of that kind of noise reduction and camera off. Focus area, I'm really just using the single point with, uh, you know, you can change the size and I don't like it real small. I like it about there uh, and I find that gets me pretty accurate results. EF mode, again, just single point. I do find the tracking works better than the X100F and the X100T, but it's just not something, you know, this camera for me is all about taking my time and just taking it slow. So I'm either in manual focus or just single point. Face and eye, sometimes I have it on, but I don't really like the way Fuji behaves with it. Like I prefer to have it on my Sony where you can use it with, it, you know, separated buttons. Uh, not to toggle on and off, but actually to activate it. I really like that. So I find sometimes it picks up eye when I don't want it. So I usually have it off, but it does work well if you want to use eye tracking. It does work really, really well. Multiple exposure, I have it set to average. I find that works the best, but again, all these results are going to vary, but I really like having it on average. And photometry, I have it on multi 
which uh, seems to work pretty well for me. Shutter type, I have it in manual and electronic, just so I, my shutter speed can go right up. I don't find any issues in terms of, uh, you know, fast moving stuff. It seems to work fine. So uh, mechanical and electronic shutter works well for me. ISO settings, I've went in and I changed them. So I have auto set to max sensitivity at 6400 with a minimum shutter speed of 200th of a second and uh, the default set to 160 which is the lowest for this camera. Uh, similar settings to my Sony cameras but I have the max set to about 12,800 and I usually have my minimum shutter speed set to 250th on my Sony's as well. Now one thing I did change as soon as I got the camera, I don't know if you can do it now with the X100F or the X100T or whatever, maybe they've, they've changed it with like a, a, a firmware update, but I have down here shutter AE, I have that turned off so what that means is if I'm in aperture priority I can half press lock my focus recompose and then my uh, exposure will adjust to that situation which is really good when I was using the X100F uh, they didn't have that option I'm not sure like I said maybe it's been added since then but when you were using single point focus and you would focus and recompose it would lock the exposure and it wouldn't change until you lifted your finger off the shutter button which it was really kind of annoying, um, so I'm really stoked to see that in the X100V. Touchscreen settings, I have them off, but you can still go through the images and zoom in and pinch to zoom and stuff like that. I just really not liking the touch to focus, I don't know why. A lot of people really love it and I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Maybe I'm just not used to it, but this is just the way I use my camera as well. So that's pretty much it in terms of my settings, but if anything changes, I'll update you in the future. Maybe we'll make a more in-depth video, but I'm sure nothing drastic is gonna change. This camera for me is really just, like I said before, about taking it slow and just really taking my time, going out and just having fun with photography. I did just wanna update you guys on the overheating issue that a lot of people are having. My camera is getting a little bit warm, but not when taking photos. I set it up on a tripod and just set it recording 4k video for a while and after about six or seven minutes it did start getting pretty warm just behind the memory card here where everybody else is saying it gets hot uh, I've already told you guys the memory cards I'm using a lot of people have said that and I had Bluetooth turned off as well uh, I never got any warning on it I recorded about 20 minutes of 4k video it did like I said it got hot but I never had a warning it's definitely not ideal that Fuji have made a camera that gets that hot when you're recording video uh, so I'm not justifying at all, but personally I bought it for photo. Uh, saying that though, it does take really, really good video. The quality is outstanding and autofocus is actually really good too. So if you bought it for video, it sucks that it overheats and uh, Fuji, you should really do something to sort that out. I don't know if they can because I feel like it's a hardware thing with the extra weather sealing and all that. But you know, it's a problem, it's there. And if you're buying one, at least you know that it has an issue. So thanks for watching guys. I'll put some of these JPEGs in the description so you can download them and have a look for yourself. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video tomorrow.